This video is for educational use only. Our group is allowing our instructor, namely Mr. Roldan Ardines, to use this as educational material. Good day, sir. Good day, cadets. On behalf of my group mates, allow me to introduce my name. I am Tech Cadet Masabang Rose Marikai to welcome you to our report entitled Contemporary Global Governance with the Integration of COVID-19 and we are the group for the repertoire for the topic Challenges of Global Governance with Integration of COVID-19 Pandemic to be discussed by Decadet Chairman Cliff Roger R. and Decadet Pahang Vince Marian. For the topic Importance of International Cooperation with the Integration of COVID-19 on Global Governance to be discussed by yours truly, Decadet Masbang Rosemary Guy and Decadet Gloria Gentle M. For the topic Effects of Globalization on Governments to be discussed by Decadet German Christian B., and Decadet German Jan Lloyd M. For the topic Institution that Govern International Relations to be discussed by Decadet Panay Sean Christian and Decadet Mates Jan Mark. For the last topic Difference between Internationalism and Globalism to be discussed by Decadet Kilat Keith Joseph M. and Decadet Baga Christian Mark T. The learning objectives First, to learn about the challenges of global governance in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. Second, to know the importance of international cooperation with the integration of COVID-19 and global governance. Third, to identify the effects of globalization on governments. Fourth, determine the institutions that govern international relations. Fifth, have knowledge on the difference between internationalism and globalism. So for the topic challenges of global governance in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, to be discussed by Decadet German Cliff Roger R. and Decadet Pahang Vince Mart. The novel coronavirus has infected millions, killed hundreds of thousands, and affected the well-being of billions more. The COVID-19 pandemic is a transitional threat that requires a global response. But the outbreak has led very divergent national approaches to managing global epidemiological interdependence and exposed broader structural weaknesses in the global governance system. Nationalist and inward-looking policies could lead to the loss of millions of lives and global economic disaster. The world needs national governments, regional organizations, and international institutions to act in the same cooperative spirit to effectively mitigate the COVID-19 outbreak. Despite major developments in the pharmaceutical industry, the spread of infectious diseases is rising due to globalization, increased travel and trade, urbanization, populated cities, changes in human behavior, reviving pathogens, and improper use of antibiotics. The recent virus outbreaks COVID-19 shows that infectious diseases spread easily due to open economies and easily threatens nations' economic stability. The second feature is the delay in the development treatment drugs under approval because the initial infection causes a significant mortality and damage to the economy. COVID-19 lockdowns have significantly disrupted the daily lives of children and adolescents. With increased time at home, online learning, and limited physical social interaction, this report seeks to understand the immediate effects on their mental health and also the economic impacts. Covering more than 130,000 children and adolescents across 22 countries. Pandemic caused a short-term fiscal impact and a long-term economic impact on the nations around the world. Effort to curb the pandemic include imposing quarantine, preparing health facilities, isolating infectious cases and tracing contacts involving public health resources, human resources and implementation costs. It also involves health system expenditures to provide health facilities to infectious cases and arrangement of consumables such as antibiotics, medical supplies and personal protective equipment. Pandemics can also result in declined tax revenues and increased expenditure, which cause fiscal stress, especially in lower middle income countries where fiscal constraints are higher and tax system still needs improvement. Other than labor shortages, disruption of transportation, closed down of workplaces, restricted trade and travel, and closed land border are reasons for the pandemic's economic slowdown. That Public finances have been negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
the closing of economies and reduced lending opportunities has decreased the value of local currencies, making repayment of dollar-dominated debt harder. Governments are also facing a fiscal deficit due to increased social protection expenditure for the unemployed and poor and reduced tax revenues. COVID-19 Healthcare Impact The healthcare sector faces challenges in the pandemic regarding diagnosis, treatment, and disease prevention. The medical system's functioning has become a burden and patients with other medical problems are getting neglected. The lives of doctors and other health professionals are at very high risk. Pharmaceutical shops are overloaded and the medical supply chain is disrupted. So, as COVID-19 strikes, people with common medical problems like fever has been neglected due to COVID-19. The hospitals prioritize the COVID-19 patients than the regular ones. Also, health professionals are the frontliners in fighting for the virus. They put their lives at risk just to help other people to survive. The coronavirus pandemic has highlighted the capitalist dysfunctions which is considered to be partly based on the priority given to profit rather than people's need. Pharmaceutical companies would have started developing the vaccine for coronavirus a long time ago if the society has not been capitalist. So, one of the biggest challenges of global governance is making vaccines for COVID-19 patients. But other governments or country make this as a business and prioritize profit than helping people. That's why pharmaceutical companies could start making vaccines right away and not wait until the virus become worse. But the government uh, used it as a business and so that's why. With the numbers of coronavirus cases growing exponentially, clients from different countries have requested emergency support and help from the World Bank as they tackle the pandemic. Procuring medical goods on an emergency basis such as masks, gowns, respirators, hospital beds, ventilators, oxygen cylinders, and ambulances is critical. The same goes for acquiring of cons consultancy service to raise public awareness and to develop laboratory and medical protocols, especially as many hospitals lack capacity to manage the number of cases and the internal organization needed to prevent intra-hospital infections. So, because of the pandemic, countries all over the world suffer from difficulties, most especially the developing countries like Philippines. So, the World Bank Group is taking broad, fast action to help developing countries strengthen their pandemic response, increase disease surveillance, improve public health interventions, and help the private sector continue to operate and sustain jobs. It is deploying up to $160 billion in financial support over the next 15 months to help countries protect the poor and vulnerable, support businesses, and bolster economic recovery. So next topic is all about the importance of international cooperation with the integration of COVID-19 and global governance to be discussed by yours truly and Tech Cadet Gloria Chantal. Throughout history, crisis and human progress have often gone hand in hand. While the growing COVID-19 pandemic could strengthen nationalism and isolationism and accelerate the retreat from globalization, the outbreak also could spur a new wave of international cooperation of the sort that emerged after World War II. COVID-19 may become not only a huge health crisis, but also a crisis of globalization and global governance. Most obviously, it raises the question of how the world should organize itself against the threat of pandemics, but it also has implications for how globalization is perceived and what that perception means for the future of the international cooperation. The crisis may prompt move to reduce global connectedness, including in terms of travel, trade, and financial, digital, and data flaws.
People may instinctively demand for isolation in many domains. Seeking protection through the blanket isolationism would be misguided and counterproductive. But in this case, communities can indeed help to contain the COVID-19 threat by adaptively reducing their connectivity through mitigation measures that increase social distance such as school and business closures, bans on public gatherings, and limitations on public transport while the crisis lasts. This is a tactical consideration, not a strategic one. The goal is not to promote the globalization, but rather to build greater robustness. When risks are potentially ruinous, systemic survival must supersede efficiency considerations. That is why, for example, macroprudential buffers like higher capital requirements in the financial sector are desirable. A clear parallel between the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change is becoming apparent. Both feature emergence, path demands, feedback loops, tipping points, and non-linearity. Both entail catastrophe, fat-tailed risk ruled by radical uncertainty, and gold for eschewing traditional cost-benefit analysis which relies on known probability distributions in favor of drastic mitigation to reduce exposure and importantly, both highlight the need for much closer forward looking international cooperation to manage global threats. Indeed, a demand for greater global cooperation is the second and more significant political trend that could emerge from the current crisis. While this might at first sound inconsistent with heightened suspicion of globalization, the necessary reforms can in fact synthesize both trends. Pandemic prevention and containment is a global public good, and providing it requires increased global coordination as well as adaptive temporary and coordinated decoupling. There is both a need for an opportunity to introduce global circuit breaker that can isolate systemic risk early and prevent them from spreading. These mechanisms will be most effective if they are clear, transparent, designed in advance, and embedded in a global governance system that legitimizes and continuously updates them. For example, governments could craft and adopt common protocols for temporary travel and trade restriction in event of a potential pandemic, supported by globally agreed upon and early warning systems and threshold for action. In the face of general lockdown of many of the world's economies, and emergencies rule expanding government powers, conventional wisdom often refers to the decline of globalization and the rise of a liberal world order. Although assertions that globalization has suffered a severe blow since onset of COVID-19 seems to speak for themselves. Assessing such an argument from a more announced perspective with a view to the contribution of international organizations and institution in the globalized world order sheds light on the current state of affairs. The implication of such a critical view are that more can should be done in the future to better equip the current international system to address issues affecting citizens of a globalized world. In addition, the international community may wish to build functional redundancy into complex systems including finance, value chain, food supply, and public health, in order to prevent central hubs from becoming choke points and to ensure that the single failures do not cascade into systemic collapse. Although this would entail some reshoring and deconcentration of the expense of efficiency. Economies of scale and comparative advantage. The goal is not autarky, but rather risk reduction through diversification. Humanity must organize itself to mitigate the tail risk associated with climate change, pandemics, bioterror, and unmanaged artificial intelligence. Although this will require a historic leap, major crises often open the political space for radical reforms, precisely at a time when rules-based multilateralism is in retreat 
perhaps the fair losing arising from COVID-19 will encourage efforts to bring about a better model of globalization. Effects of globalization on governments. Globalization thus has a powerful economic, political, cultural, and social implications for sovereignty. Globalization has led to a decline in the power of national governments to direct and influence their economies, especially with regard to macroeconomic management and to determine their political structures. So globalization generally lowers the cost of manufacturing. This implies that businesses can charge customers less for their products. One important factor that raises the level of life is the average cost of commodities. Additionally, consumers have access to a greater range of goods. However, globalization restrains governments by inducing increased budgetary pressure. As a consequence, governments shift their expenditures in favor of transfers and subsidies and away from the capital expenditure. This expenditure shift is potentially enhanced by citizens' preferences to be compensated for the risk of globalization. So globalization limits the freedom for a government to act, but also can make the acts much more powerful. Deviating too much from other countries will cause disturbing flows of money, people, goods, and etc. For example, low corporate profit tax attract only mother companies that only make the tax declaration and bring not much more. An unbalanced budget will sooner or later drive the interest rates for new loans. Somehow, as the countries have become more interconnected, they have needed to work together more. And as a result of globalization, a rapidly growing economic force has demonstrably become a developing political force. This structural change has reached such a point that institutions of global governments and the process of global governments face increasing demands. So working together is a crucial for us to achieve economic stability and success, which often leads to political stability, decreased crime, and more commerce at a time when we are dealing with any issues, especially the COVID-19, all of which strengthens the economy of the helping countries, lower the risk of political unrest, and reduces crime rates generally. As the words become more and more interconnected due to massively increased trade and cultural exchange. So far, it has resulted in increasing international trade. More and more companies are operating globally rather than nationally. High level of dependence between countries and economies. Free movements of capital, goods, services, and people. As a result of international trade, the market is more competitive. This ultimately results in more competitive pricing and brings a cheaper product home to the consumers. Also, it allows countries to expand their markets and access good service and that otherwise may not have been available domestically and as it offers great potential in terms of benefits for consumers and SMS. It allows to ensure that the quality of the services provides to consumers is high. Globalization has led to increase in standards of living around the world, but not all of its effects are positive for everyone. Despite many will proven benefits, globalization been severely criticized, criticized by many for the following reasons. There are no guarantees that the wealth created from foreign investment will benefit local community, even in the form of business income tax, because most of the profits are sent back to develop countries their investors are based. Giant multinational companies have been driving local businesses to the ground cause simply can compete. Since, since it's cheaper to operate in other countries, companies tend to move their operation overseas, which lead increasing number of people without employment at home. It's unfortunately that industry in developing countries are driven at the expense of job, mostly manufacturing jobs in developed countries.
The United Nations is one of the institutions that govern international relations. It is an intergovernmental organization whose stated purposes are to maintain international peace and security, develop friendly relations among nations, achieve international cooperation, and be a center for harmonizing the actions of nations. The UN outlines the public health measures that all countries need to implement to prepare for and respond to COVID-19. It is being financed through government budgets, the UN Central Emergency Response Fund, and the WHO Solidarity Response Fund, which is open to corporations and individuals. The World Health Organization is also an institution that govern international relations. It is a specialized agency of the United Nations responsible for international public health. The WHO Constitution states its main objective as the attainment by all people of the highest possible level of health. WHO works worldwide to promote health, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable. The WHO responded to COVID-19 pandemic by producing a strategic preparedness and response plan that helps in prevention, surveillance, containment, treatment, and coordination across the world. So, the global institutions like the United Nations or UN and World Health Organization, WHO, are the institutions that govern international relations with regards to COVID-19 and towards the integration of the global economy. Along with them are various other players such as the civil society, governmental and non-governmental organizations have been the heart of the collective action against the global health crisis and have achieved remarkable success in containing infectious diseases like HRV or AIDS. The collective collaboration with the WHO and the UN along with the non-governmental and non-state actors in cases of global security threats have done play the role of domestic influence in modulating norms to the local setting and recognition of the local, global local operation and health security risk. The plan set out by the UN is being coordinated by the OCHA with IACS partners including WFP, FAO, WHO, IOM, UNDP, UNFPA and Habitat and complement appeals of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movements and the NGOs. Coronavirus Disease 2019 is an unprecedented public health emergency with associated significant economic impact affecting all developing and developed countries. As it unfolds and countries response, the role of Supreme Audit Institution or the SAIs is being recognized as a crucial to support the government response mechanism through maintaining public financial management discipline and ensuring transparency and accountability. Past experience from ASI, engagement in government response to nature and human-made disasters, including health emergency like Ebola, provides good lessons for ASI confronted with the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Supreme Audit Institution are the national level watchdog agency responsible for the audit of government revenue and expenditure. By criticizing public financial management and reporting, they provide assurance that ensure and use directed by national government. This noted seek to propose idea on how ASI can respond to the crisis now and during the recovery phase. The World Bank is the provider of financial and technical assistance to individual countries around the globe. This bank considers itself as the unique financial institution that set up partnership to reduce poverty and support economic development. The World Bank Group is taking broad fast action to help developing countries strengthen their pandemic response, increasing increase disease surveillance, improve public health intervention, and help private sector continue operating and sustain jobs. It is de developing up to 160 billion financial support over the next 15 months to help countries protect the poor and vulnerable, support business and bolster economic recovery with regards to issue of COVID-19 pandemic. So the World Bank is a provider of financial and technical assistance to individual countries around the globe. The bank considers itself as a unique financial institution that sets up partnership to reduce poverty and support economic development. The government, the government's globe practices role consists of ensuring a successful response to COVID-19, providing a stream of work and institutional reform that supports clients, countries in navigating and increase fragility, extreme pressure, and resources, and rapidly 
involving large-scale service delivery needs. Internationalism is a political principle that advocates greater political or economic cooperation among states and nations. It is associated with other political movements and ideologies, but can also reflect a doctrine, belief system, or movement in itself. Supporters of internationalism are known as internationalized and generally believe that humans should unite across national, political, cultural, racial, and class boundaries to advance their common interests or that governments should cooperate because their mutual long-term interests are of greater importance than their short-term dispute. Some, uh, international has several interpretation and meanings, but usually characterized by opposition of nationalism and isolationalism. Support for international institu institutions such as United Nations and a cosmo cosmopolitan outlook that promotes and respect other cultures, cultures and customs. The term is similar to but distinct from Globalism, globalism and cosmopolitanism. Definition of internationalism. One, international character, principles, interests, or outlook. Number two, a policy of cooperation among nations. B, an attitude or belief favoring such a policy. Our world is becoming increasing, interconnected, and therefore interdependent become of globalization. Not only that, but there are a number of systemic issues that cannot be resolved solely through independent nation states. This combination of interdependent on their parties and systemic issues can and makes their presence of robust international, internationalism of paramount importance. Internationalism calls for greater cooper, cooperation among people inter, irrespective of nationality, culture, politics, or other identities. Without internationalism, coordination problem emerge that makes resolve globalist systemic issues incredibly difficult. So it means internationalism is most commonly expressed as an appreciation for the diverse culture in the world and a desire for the world peace. People who express their view believe is not only being a citizen of their respective countries but being a citizen of the world. One other way why we should pursue internationalism is to share resources between different countries for better goods and services. Even though there's a lot of people who disagree with the decision to pursue internationalism, but I still agree against it because it benefits everybody, especially developing countries and countries who are struggling. It helps countries share resources, cooperate, and exchange goods. Other way why we should pursue internationalism is to cooperate with other countries with peace and harmony so that everybody can benefit from it and live a happy life. Some of the reasons of internationalism which includes first is increased sales and profits, number two, short and long-term security, next, increased innovation and management learning, economics and of scale, competitive strike, minimize risk to get cheaper labor, Lastly, providing challenging opportunities. So it means internationalism promotes peace and security, self-determination, economic stability, and humanitarianism. For example, in the world, international sports events like Olympics, the host country will have great economic benefits because of attracting foreign investment. The tourism generated by the event also boosts the economy. The International Monetary and WTO also promote internationalism by giving funds that encourage economic stability and help to, to solve poverty and hunger around the world. Some people don't agree with the idea of transnational corporation having so so much power within with a nation state. However, if all nation state works in internationalism stands for a family self-respecting and self-governing nations linked 
to each other by bond of goodwill, cooperation, and assistance. As ideal internationalism is certainly higher and nobler, nobler that nationalism beca because of the good of humanity is far higher than the welfare of a particular country or a community. Internationalism can sustain quality of life of many nations. It can also greatly Im improve the quality of life that nations cannot achieve on their own by in interacting with other nations either bilateral or multilateral. Nations can achieve many interests through internationalism. Nations may also lead a hand to other nations who were developing and struggling. This helps the world become more integrated in a way that benefits all, not only by developing a developed nations. Internationalism is an important part of our global, globalized world. It presents many opportunities that when fulfilled properly can greatly benefit a nation. As the world continues to evolve, countries all over the world have been expanding their assets in the cultural and economic system. Over the past years, the world has been busy porting and exporting goods. Globalization has been ruling many countries all over the world. It's been a way of trading. At the same time, proving each economy of the country thriving become a better nation. Globalization is the word used to describe the growing interdependence of the world's economy, cultures, and populations brought about by the cross-border trade in goods and services, technology, and flows of investment, people, and information. Countries have built economic partnerships to facilitate these movements over many centuries, but the term gained popularity after the Cold War in the early 1990s as these cooperative arrangements shaped modern everyday life. This guide uses the term more in early to refer to the international trade and some of the investments lost among advanced economies, mostly focusing on the United States. So, in simple terms, globalization is the process by which people and goods move easily across the borders. Principally, it's an economic concept, the integration of markets, trade, and investments with few barriers to slow down the flow of products and services between nations. So nowadays, globalization has been even evidently seen and witnessed all over the world. Our country, the Philippines, have also joined the international trading of goods in order for our country to be widely connected with other countries. Furthermore, in terms of culture, our culture and tradition have been exposed all over the world due to the influence and impact of globalization. So one of the good example of culture globalization, for instance, the trading of commodities such as coffee or avocados. Coffee is said to be originally from Ethiopia, consumed in the Arabic region. Nonetheless, due to commercial trades after the 11th century, it is nowadays known as the globally consumed commodity. Avocados, for instance, are grown mostly under the tropical temperatures of Mexico, the, Domin the Dominican Republic, or Peru. It started by being produced in small quantities to supply the local populations, but today, guacamole or avocado toast are common in every meals all over the world. So we, as an aspiring seafarers, serves as the instrument for globalization to exist and gradually expand by importing and exporting various products from different places. It has brought convenience to the people. Thus, we, aspiring seafarers, play a vital and crucial role of, for bringing globalizations all over the world. The world as it continues to expand and influence countries that persevere to become a developed and stable economy.